It should be any second now. Looks like it's moving a little slow. Okay, and there it is. Well, hello everyone. Good evening. How uh, how everybody doing today? It's been a nice day. Started out a little cloudy. Now got a little sunshine and it's getting a little cooler. But hey, this Texas, we get it all in just a matter of hours. Uh, but I uh, I hope your day is going well. I hope everything's been good to you for on this Wednesday. Um, and we just like to welcome everybody. Uh, today, uh, we're not side by side here. My wife on the table. But I'm okay. But uh, yes, we, but we are anxious to uh, indulge God's word. And again, we hope uh, that all has been uh, good with you um, this week. And uh, just uh, everything has been continued to. Uh, just be well and hope you enjoyed your three-day weekend uh, MLK uh, holiday on Monday was a nice day uh, so uh, here we are so I'm going to uh, open us up in a word of prayer and then we will uh, jump right into uh, God's word excuse me Heavenly Father we thank you uh, for this day for this time Lord, we thank you for all that you do. Uh, Father, we ask that your word goes forth, uh, Lord, and change hearts and minds. Uh, Lord, let us serve you well. Father, we thank you uh, for keeping us uh, safe and uh, with all that is going on around us in this world, Lord. Uh, Father, we just uh, we depend on you to care for us, uh, to keep us, Lord. And we just thank you for all uh, that you do. And, and Father, that your word will go forth tonight and encourage someone, Lord, and uh, bring them closer to you. That is the goal. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. 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 Hey, where you go? You're disappearing and stuff. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. <laughs> but uh, tonight we are going to talk about unity. 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 That's it. Um, and um, our first um, scripture that we're going to discuss is uh, 1 Corinthians 1.10. 1 Corinthians 1.10. And it says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly united in mind and in thought. He said, come together, my people. Mm -hmm. Even they're not talking to the world, y'all. He's, he's talking to his people. So uh, if you would, babe, go ahead and share what's on your mind. All right. Well, he's telling them, he says, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's mentioning, now this is not my authority, but this is the hey, Lord Jesus you? Christ that I'm asking you to come together in unity. Um, and some versions say that we may uh, speak the same language, or that we would agree with one another is what Paul is trying to emphasize. And then he uh, pleased with us that we not only come together as a church body, but we also come together as in mind, harmony in mind, in, in our confession of Christ. And it just, uh, when you go on, we just read uh, verse 10, but if you go on 11 through 13, it's talking about the reason why they were divided. It's because some of these people from Chloe's household would have reported to Paul that there was division in the Corinthian church because some was claiming that they was in the house of uh, the camp of Paul, and some was saying that they was followers of Apollos, and some was saying that they was followers of Peter, and some was saying that they was followers of Christ. And he said it shouldn't be that kind of division amongst us that he asked the question, is Christ divided? Um, 
Did when you was baptized, were you baptized in my name? The answer is no. Um, when you believe, was it me that saved you? No, it was Christ who saved you. So the thing we should be unified as a church body. And oftentimes, and even in today, there's no difference. You know, we got uh, the full gospel and the Baptist, the Methodist, um, the Latter-day Saints, the ones that say uh, the Seventh-day Adventists, I mean, they say that uh, you should only worship on Saturdays, and some people fall out about that, and that uh, women shouldn't wear makeup or that women shouldn't wear dresses and people fall out about all those different things. And Paul was saying, we need to stay unified in our thinking. And our main thing that we need to be thinking about is Jesus Christ and our salvation that came through him alone. All these other things are just majoring on the minors. And so we shouldn't think about that. We shouldn't focus our attention on that. Uh, one of Satan's major devices is for us to be divided. He gives yes. different devices. And so right now, in this day and time, we're divided on um, whether abortion is should be legal or not legal. Um, the taking of ones like we got the pro-life or the pro-choice people. Mm -hmm. And we're arguing back and forth with that. Should, it, should the government regulate that kind of stuff? It's always going to be different things that Satan puts in our way that's going to cause us to be divided. So that's not only in the church, that's not only amongst believers, but even on our jobs. You know, we got these uh, little clicks and sets that we have even on our jobs, and we shouldn't be like that. Even in our homes, we are often divided, even in our homes, you know, a husband against wife, or um, children and wife against the husband, and Stuff like that. There is different things that Satan, one of his tools that he uses is the vision. And if he keep us divided, then we can't get much accomplished. But when we are unified, we strike a mighty blow. I think it makes me think of uh, soul food. He said that, you know, these the hands all separated can do a little power. You know, you can slap somebody, but when you fall that thing up, it can strike a mighty blow. <laughs> Absolutely right. You know, and we have uh, become as as people. Uh, we have favorites. We we choose our favorites, and, and and nothing wrong with that when you choosing your football team or your basketball team and all. But when we uh, come together in Christ, uh, I don't care if it's Reverend Do Right, uh, Reverend uh, <laughs> Reverend okay. Johnson. Whoever bringing the word of God to focus is on Christ. Yes. They have, the, the, you know, the different preachers are going to have their different dynamics. You know, some of them you like, oh, man, I really enjoy his preaching. You know, mm -hmm. I enjoy his style. I don't really care for his style. But what are you getting from his word? What is he bringing? Exactly. See, that, that's where we lose our focus. Because uh, uh, Reverend Durack can get up there and, uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we get all excited, but what has he done to edify God? And what has he done to help us uh, understand the word of God that we need to be bringing into our spirits and, and into our hearts and our minds? See, we, 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 we can't be distracted. That's where the enemy wins. Divided, we fall. Amen. That's where, we, where, he, where he says we have to come together uh, and agree with one another. Not agree with one another for the benefit of, of getting along, but agreeing with one another in God's word. Yes. See, once you lose focus and you start trying to get folks to agree on, on these other subjects, it never comes out in the wash. Look at our politicians. Mm. They can't come together and agree on a pencil. They could. They, they would argue over a number two pencil of no. We should new, use number three. A number two pencil. No, they would argue about that. Grown men and women who run our nation in charge of our welfare, but they spend most of their time in petty arguments about things that will benefit who them, their friends, their 
But when we're talking about the word of God, beneficial to all who accept him as their savior, then we can come, we can do glorious things. Yes. When we come together in agreement with the word of God and when we come fall under his will uh, to do his bidding, then we can see accomplishment that will blow your mind. You know, yes. we, we may see some of these, excuse me, my eye is itching, but uh, we see some of these big churches. Oh, they got big, beautiful churches and they got all these facilities. Yeah, they got money and stuff. But do they have Jesus? Mm. Do they mm. have what really matters? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm learning in my church history class. Uh, the <laughs> man, the first church split started a long time ago. This ain't nothing new. Mm. It started way back uh, when, when the, first, the church first started to develop. And, and you had the Catholics and the Protestants. You had a split back then, and they went their ways because they wanted, one side wanted this, one side wanted that. But if they wanted the word of God and focused on that, that's where the yes. unity comes in. Yes. And, and, and so uh, that's what he says at the end of this. But, you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. And we can only be united in mind and thought when the word of God is our focus. Otherwise, it's going to be what I like or what you like, what you favor, what I favor. That's what it's going to end up being. But the word in, of God is not compromised. It doesn't take sides. God says this is what it is, and that's what it is. God is not a politician. He's not soliciting your vote. He didn't ask you. Which part of my words you want and which part you don't? He didn't ask. He said, this is my word, accept it fully or go on about your business. That's where we have to unite people. We have to break down those barriers of selfishness, of selfless, or self that we want. Self is getting in the way of what God would have for us. And that's what we have to focus on. Keep our focus straight that if we're going to be unified, if we're going to come together, it's got to be under the umbrella of God, not in the traditions and the sayings and the wants and needs of man. Mm -hmm. Because we're all going to want something a little different. But when we gravitate to God's word, that's where the unity comes out. And that's where we're, we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot because we can't move forward. Because we're focusing on our needs, our wants, instead of what God has put before us. And when you know, when you shoot yourself in the foot, you can't walk. And you're limping on that. <laughs> and that's what we're doing. So we, we have to come together. We have to uh, understand that this is an appeal. Did you, you Right here, when, he, when he, he's appealing to the church, appeal to you, brothers and sisters. He ain't coming in with a hammer. He coming in with what? Love. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In love. That, that, that represents love right there. Right there. And that's what we have to be to one another. Amen. You know, so, but, but, but we, we, we got to get it together and uh, understand what we, what we focus on, what we put our, set our eyes on is what's going to dictate how we act, how we, we carry ourselves. And when we put that on Christ, when we put our eyes on Christ, that, that, that comes with a certain uh, uh, group of characteristics that you're going to display. But when you're putting it on everything else, it's going to show up, and then it's going to blow up. <laughs> Believe that. So um, our next uh, scripture that we're... Uh, going to be referencing is Romans 15, 5 through 7. Romans 15, 5 through 7. And it says, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice 
you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. He, 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 he's saying, let's give God the glory. Man, we fall in, I, I want to say, we fall in short on giving God the glory uh, in these days and times. So go ahead, uh, sweetie. Jesus' main purpose was to do the will of the Father. 
he came here and he didn't do it all that he did because he wanted to do the will of the Father, and that was to die for the salvation of mankind. Yes, you're right. And you know, here at the beginning of this, it says, May the God who gives you endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other. God who gives us, who gives us the endurance, gives us the ability to, to, to go through and, and make it through and to encourage us that we just have this same mindset. Yes. Uh, and, and, that, that, and that's what Christ had towards us even though we didn't deserve it. We, you know, we sinners. At the highest, the, I heard somebody say, how we, we bring, we, 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 we question God, we question Christ, uh, why he does things. And mm -hmm. who are we mm -hmm. that come from dust, come from dirt, yes. and have the audacity to question at that level? Now, I understand that you do question God, why? What, what should I do in this? But but to, to buck, you know, we've gotten to the point that we want to buck God. Okay. We, some of us call ourselves God. Mm. We are gods. We are, we, we can, uh, we, we can speak it into existence. There you go. Name it and claim it. It's name you, it and great. Did you, you go, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. But but we, we 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 have began to have this mindset that uh, I, I I want the positive vibes. I only want positive vibes around around me. And well, ain't nothing wrong with being around positive people mm -hmm. and doing positive things. But if they are geared toward our selfish uh, accomplishment that we want to accomplish, then that that's to no end. But when we do it for God, because here he says, "May that you may that, that one uh, so that one mind and one voice may glorify the God, God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ." Let's glorify God with what we're doing. Christ did what he did in obedience to the Father. To glorify the Father, and the Father in turn, in turn did what glorified his son. That's right. That's love. Mm. That's love. Jesus didn't do it to glorify himself. He did it to glorify his father. And his father asked him to do it so that he could what? Glorify his son. That's love, y'all. That's unselfish, unconditional love. Looking out. And you know, we 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 like glory. We, we like glory. You hear it all the time. Well, he's the goat. He's the goat. He's the, and y'all know what I say about that. Yeah, he's the billy goat. And that's about as goat as any of us get, you know. People, we need a hero. We want a hero. We want this guy or that girl to be the one. Bump that, y'all. They fallible just like you. They have limitations just like you. They have, some people have some extraordinary talent. Amen. But they, you can't put them in God's place. You give them credit where credit is due. But you can't put them in God's place. If you idolize them, what, what I think God says in his words, you should not worship an idol. You can't put them, you can, you can say, that can be a standard if you're a football player and this guy, man, I, I, I want to raise my game to that level. There's nothing wrong with that. But when, when somebody says, oh, man, Brady trash, and you get in an uproar, oh, man, yeah. oh, come on, you know, took it too far. You can, you know, I do not love my Cowboys. You know, and they, well, the Cowboys this, that, okay, well, that's how you feel about them. I still love my cowboy. I'm a cowboy fan. I'm ride and die. But we're not going to get into a fight behind the cowboys. Because Jerry, Jerry don't pay no bills over here. No, Jerry don't pay no bills over here. Now, Jerry can let me coach and pay some of these bills if he'd like, you know. 
But anyway, but 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 we 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 looking for a hero. Let's look for a hero in Jesus. Jesus yes. is our hero. Yes, he is. We keep on putting men on those pedestals. You know, uh, I saw an interview, a short interview, uh, with uh, uh, had Mike Tyson, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, Muhammad Ali, and. Uh, Arsenio Hall was talking to him, and he asked Ali, "If you in your heyday, if you fought him, could you have won?" Ali was like, oh, "I don't know about all that." You know, Ali didn't get cocky or nothing. And then he asked Tyson, and Tyson said, "Man, in his heyday, this man was something else." They both humbled themselves. They didn't puff themselves up. And you know, Mike Tyson. I don't think he got, you know, somebody say he got some, somebody got a screw loose. I don't think any of his are tight. <laughs> but, but Mike gave him his respect. You know, they, they humbled themselves in that situation. And that's what we have to do. Even though they are talented men at the top of their game at one point, they humbled themselves in the presence of one another out of respect. We need to humble ourselves before our father. We have a hard time, especially the male species of the human race, with humility. Because society teaches us otherwise. Nothing wrong with teaching a man to be a man, to stand up and work and do it. But don't put yourself on the pedestal. Because when you fall, it hurts. You know, so let, I'm, I'm going to let God sit up on the throne. I'm going to keep looking to him, and I'm going to keep going to him for what I need and, 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 to, and to take care of my needs and to answer my questions and to get me through the, and give me the endurance and give me the encouragement that I need and give me the mindset that I need because we've got to come together. It's all about coming together. Uh, we just celebrated Martin Luther King's birthday, and Martin Luther King had a movement that was pushing for civil rights, that just we, let's be treated the same. But here in America, they say no. They say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll write a bill and say that we will. The bill will say we will, but we're gonna sit back here and say we won't and we ain't gonna ever. And we know that's the play. But God's talking to his people, y'all. Don't forget, he's not talking to the world. He's talking to his people. We are the ones that have to set the standards. And when we make a mockery of what God has established, the world looks at us and all they see is Ronald McDonald, Bozo the Clown. That's what it's <laughs> That's all they see. That's, that's all they see because that's what we put out there. And we can't continue to do that. We can't continue to give our, our, our father a black eye. We got to glorify him. When we were kids, you know, what did mama tell you? Don't you go out in the streets and embarrass me. Don't you, don't you do it. So what we did, when we did something good, came home, had those good moments. Mama, I did good in school. Mama. And when the parent-teacher day came, you wanted your teacher to tell your mom, he has been, uh, she has been a great student. They helped and this, 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 this. Glorify the Father. That's what we have to do because he loves us, he's taking care of us, and he continues to love us, and he has provided our true future. He has, he says, I go to, 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 a, to have a place for you. He, he, he has went before us to establish this kingdom for us to come in and spend, time, spend our eternity in paradise. So we have to... Uh, have the mindset toward each other and toward the Father to, to come together to give glory to his name. To, to, um, it, because it's, it's, you know, y'all, it's, it's far too long and we way too old now 
to keep going down the same route. And we and if we don't teach our babies, where do they end up? And who's responsible? Quit calling this younger generation crazy because if they crazy, guess what? You crazy. You taught them to be the way they are. That's, 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 that's just the bottom line. So we got to get, like my boy Cool say, I love it. He said, you got to get your mind right. You got to get your, your mind bad. You got to get your mind right. And when we get our mind right and we focus on what God says to live, to do, to how to live, man, we come together. Life is so much better. Life is so much better. I, I just think about when we were kids in West Dallas, and I was saying, I was tell, sharing with Kadra, all the way down the street on Holy Stone, uh, from Greenleaf to, uh, to Canada Drive. I don't know how many units that was, the projects. But it was all the way down, it was a bunch of folk. And I knew almost all of them. Almost everybody I knew. Because there was love in our neighborhood. Yeah, it was a little tough, some, but it was love in our neighborhood. We enjoyed one another. We, 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 we talked and communicated and socialized and all of this. We, why? Because we had the same mindset. We were of the same world. And we were on the same mission to grow up and have a better life. And God, that's what he wants for us his people, to start to come together and, and love each other and think about and care for one another so that the world can look in and say, what is going on over there? I want some of that. And they can get introduced to Christ and they can be a part of this whole dynamic. Yes. So that's what, we, it, what, that's what unity looks like, y'all. I, I, I love when we come together in unity, when we... When we on one accord when we, we're, we're, we're village raising our kids because all of the adults have this like mindset and they ain't finna let kids get away with nothing. But in this day and time, Miss, Miss, Miss Susan, don't you put your hand on my kid. Don't raise your voice at my kid. And then uh, two years later, oh, my baby dog, my baby girl, he was such a good kid. No, your kid wasn't. You taught them how to be the worst of the worst. And you looked the other way and, 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 you, and you justified their wrongness and they had to suffer because of that. Let's not do that anymore, y'all. Let's love on each other and, and focus on God and come together and so that we are unified. That's what we are missing. This country has so blown up and separatism, that it is crazy, it is maddening. Every time you turn on your TV and the news story, man, I, I just, this morning, <laughs> I had to laugh, or this yesterday morning, I looked at the TV, and they say, you know, egg prices are skyrocketing. And they show the three and four stores that ain't got no eggs. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Then they could get a guy come on. Well, you know, in the Midwest, uh, bird flu is up. Now the birds have a pandemic. The chickens got a bird flu, and now this, they got a pandemic. Now the price of eggs is going up. Well, I got to say this early. Happy Easter. Well, you know God might be taking the eggs out of Easter, which he need to, because eggs ain't got nothing to do with Easter. But right. this is what the world has come to, y'all. Division. And when they keep you divided, you are already come. They don't even have to conquer you. Mm. They just have to put division there. And so they don't have to do anything. So you divided, you can't focus on them over there cheating, mm. <laughs> keeping you down, because you're arguing with one another. They don't threw the blanket over your head. And you swinging at the wind. Mm. So uh, glory goes to the Father. And that's what we need to be doing. Everything we can to glorify him. Uh, okay, uh, 
last but not least, we're going to go. Did you have anything else, babe, that you want to add? No, sir. Huh? I'm good. Oh, you good? I'm good. Okay. The last one is uh, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 14 through 16. And it says, Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. It's like building a car. When you put all the parts together, you go in there and crank it up, it works. But if you put all the parts, you can get a brand new car if you ain't got no wheels on it. You ain't going nowhere. No. Not you can put the wheels on it. If it ain't got a gas tank to put gas in or if it ain't an electric back, you ain't going nowhere. You need all of the parts to be a sick. It's called unity. Yes. Ooh, it's called you. Go ahead, baby. Go ahead. All right. Well, I'm going to go up a couple of more verses. I'm going to go up to verse 11. And it talks about that uh, it was Christ who chose to give different gifts to his people. He chose some to be apostles. And so apostles were, um, in order to qualify as an apostle, to be called apostle, you had to be on earth doing Christ's ministry. Um, so we got these people that's walking around today calling themselves apostles, and they don't meet the requirements. But the apostles is talking about that God chose some to be apostles, and so they were like the foundation layers of the gospel. And then he chose some to speak uh, messages from God. He chose some to tell God's good news to many people. So those are the evangelists. And he chose some to take care of his people and to teach them. And so those are our pastors and our teachings. He gave all these gifts to help God's people to serve him in different ways. As a result, the church, which is like Christ's body, would become strong. In that way, all of us will become united in like one person. We will all believe in Jesus as the Son of God. Mm. We will all know him. We will become like a man who is grown up well, we will be complete as God wants us, just like Jesus Christ himself. And then it goes into the verses that you just read that we will no longer be tossed to and fro um, with these strange doctrines that come up. God's main purpose for equipping the church is that with these different people of leadership, and so he just named some of the different gifts that Jesus Christ gave. These are not all the gifts, but he, Paul here is naming the leadership roles that God gave to the church. And the purpose for him giving these people to the church is that um, the people of God may be equipped in order to do service for God. And it's kind of like, uh, he used the word to prepare or to put things, set things straight. So some uh, version might say equipping the body of Christ. Some may say to prepare the body of Christ. Or I can say to put right the body of Christ. But it's kind of like when you have surgery. If you broke a bone and how they have to set that bone right. Um, that's what this is all about. The purpose of these leaders is to set things right. Like he said, there was all different, different types of doctrine that was going on there. And so God put things in place for the church of then and even today that the truth may be known, but we are supposed to give this truth in love. When we see error, we're not just supposed to be quiet about it. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to speak on it, but we have to be careful about the way how we speak on it. Uh, we have to do it in love, and we also have to do it realizing that we all have our shortcomings. And so just because you feel a strong way about something doesn't mean that it's the truth and that it's right. So we need to go to a person in gentleness and humility when we go to correct them, and we ought to do this in love. Um, 
this is what unites all members of God's body, uh, from the apostles all the way to somebody that we may call, consider an insignificant church member. It's when we come together with a purpose of realizing, like I said earlier, that our purpose as a church is to build up one another and to save the lost. And if we keep our minds set on that, then we will accomplish the ultimate end, which is being complete in Jesus Christ. The goal of all believers should be to be rich, unity, and faith. This realization of unity comes from increasing knowledge of God, of, the, of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And so that is our goal, is to reach for maturity um, and not individuality. When we have mature, unity is a mark of maturity. Individuality is a mark of immaturity. And so we need to go, banish and do away with those childish attitudes. And a sign of being childish is when new doctrine come along and you just go run after that doctrine. And then you go run after new, this new age thing. That, that, I ain't never heard that before, so that must be something. No, God's word is true and God's word remains the same. And there he does not have a new gospel. It's the same gospel of hope. Yeah. And so we need to continue with that. Because when we don't, we are led astray. And uh, Paul talks about that uh, there is some cunning going on, meaning that there is some trickery that men use in order to uh, get you to believe the way that they do. And they use some craftiness. He used that word as well. And that's showing no moral principles. They stopping at nothing in order to deceive you and to lead you away from what God is trying to do in your life. So, as believers, we need to stay unified, and the way that we stay unified is to stay in God's Word, um, because when we get away from God's Word, anything and everything goes. And that's the where we are today in this world, in America especially, is anything goes. What used to be wrong is now considered right, and what used to be right is now considered wrong. So, that's because we're getting away from God's Word as being the central uh, authority for all that is right. Yes, absolutely. You know, um, the first part of this is grow up. Mm -hmm. Grow up. We've got to grow up. We, When we were kids, we were so anxious to grow up. How many of y'all said, I can't wait till I get grown. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I guarantee you, all of you have wished since then you could have oh. stayed a kid. Because yeah, this grown-up thing ain't no joke. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, oh. Yeah. And, and so you are no longer an infant. When you're an infant, you're not accountable because you don't know. Yeah. You are in the learning process. Now you, you, you start to learn things. And, and, and then, you know, you start to get so now, because when you don't know, you are tossed back and forth. Somebody tells you this and then they tell you that. You don't know what is what. But then you mature and you grow. Now, you, you, you can't go for the okie doke. It says, and be blown here and there by every wind, teaching cunning craftiness of people, deceitful scheming. Now you have matured. Now you like, you side eye. You the side eye king or the side eye queen. You be like, <laughs> yeah, right. Because you don't go for anything because you learn something. You learn these lessons and you take them forward with you. So when you see it coming, you be like, ah, I can dodge that. I've seen that before. But when you are just open to Oh, that's new. Let's do. Oh, this. Yeah, boy, if one more person. And, and if that's what you want to believe, you believe it. But I get my energy from the universe. Well, why don't you just take, do this. Take some universe home and cook it and eat it. <laughs> then you can tell me you got your energy from the universe. The universe gave you. What did you do, grab a star? That's light years away. You went and grabbed the star and got some energy from the universe. No, come on, people. You can't keep going for this. It says cunning and craftiness. I'm going to go back to our politician. Mm -hmm. When I'm elected, I am going to, uh, I'm going to get control of your property taxes. I'm going to bring them down. 
Yeah, I've been in office for eight years, man, and property tax done went up every year. But election time, you say you're going to bring that, and then you get elected, and six months later, property taxes go up again. Crafty, deceitful, scheming people. They playing the game. And, and you know, we, we have to go with the, we, we part of this. And so we have to vote for our elected officials and this and that. But I know, because I vote for you don't believe, mean that I believe in you. I'm being a uh, responsible citizen, and I'm voting for the lesser of two evils, mm. or three evils, or whatever, however many y'all run. That's what I'm doing. I don't trust you, because you have showed me to be cunning, crafty, deceitful, scheming people. I recognize you. I believe you are who you showed me you are. Why? Because when I was a youngster, I had these encounters. I saw this as a young man, uh, eight, nine years old, going to the resident council meeting with my mom and watching these guys who worked for DHA battle against her, who was standing up for the rights of the people who lived in the projects. She just wanted them to be treated, but they were going to war with her. They, 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 they didn't like her because she was standing for what was right for the people. Not saying my mom was perfect, but she was standing up for folks who would not stand up or could not stand up for themselves. And I saw at a young age, man, wait a minute. She's just trying to do something right, and they fighting against, what's the problem here? And they raised their voice a couple of times. My mama can hold on, but you know, eight-year-old Tony was ready to get out. You know, you, you know I ain't going to tell y'all what I did in the end because y'all be like, ooh. But anyway, but, but, but we have to uh, mature and focus on, like he says here, instead... Speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect a mature body of him who is the head. We are the body. Christ is the head. And if he's the head and he gives us, the, the, the head does the thinking. The body reacts. God does the thinking. His word is the thinking. His word is what we should react. And we are all over the place. We ain't doing what the head say do. Mm. How would you like it if you walked out the house and you said, well, I'm finna walk down here to the store and your legs say, no, you ain't. We going this way. Your legs just start going that way. Your mind saying go this way because I need to go this way because it's going to benefit me to go to the store and get some food so we can eat. But your legs say, no, we going this way. Your legs just take off going that way. Man, that would be so jacked up, wouldn't it? But that's how we are. Christ says, follow me. And we looking at him to see if he's looking at us. And when he ain't looking, there we go. To the side. Get ourselves in the bind. And as soon as we get in the bind, what we do? Oh, Lord! And here he comes to get the one. Here he comes. He leaves the others to come get us, to rescue us. This is what he does. So we, we should grow and mature so we can follow the head that is Christ you know from him the whole body joined held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love and each part does what it's supposed to do my eyes are supposed to see my ears are supposed to hear my mouth talks switch that around how awkward that would that be if I walked up to you and turned my head to the side and my ears started talking? Mm. It's out of place. It's out of whack. You'd be like, ooh, something wrong with him. It is something wrong with us, y'all. That's this message is saying that we are not doing what we should be doing when we full well know the word of God guides us. Yet we rebel. It's a natural thing. And it's a tough thing. Not, not, I'm not saying, oh, I got it together. 
I'm always following Christ. I'm, I'm always doing the right thing. I would that would be a big fat lie. Because there's times that, uh, yeah, I still want to revert to, ooh, I want to choke somebody. I want to slap somebody. I want to do something to somebody. But because of love, I rethink it. Because I've allowed God to be the captain of my ship. So I'm, I'm not in control of the steering anymore. I'm right. And yeah, sometimes I tell the driver, oh, turn right here, turn right here, turn right here. And he said, no, we shouldn't turn right there, don't. Because we turn right there, you're going to get yourself in a bind. But sometimes we say, okay, let's stop the car. And we just get out and walk on phone on. But we got to continue to focus on God. Unity is about coming together in love, y'all. And, and it's a, it's a learn. You, you've got to learn to love one another. Get beyond uh, your little petty differences. There's some of y'all uh, that I haven't seen in years, you know. I remember from childhood, Sherry Burns is one of them. We grew up together. I remember. Got nothing but love for you. We was always cool. We never had any. But we fam because we from the same hood. And, and I'm glad to see uh, that you're on you're on and joining us and that you're being encouraged by us, you know, that this is, man, that's, that, that's great. Because God wants all this. He's calling his people to do his work. And if we can come together and show love amongst ourselves, we can draw others in to come be introduced to our Savior. It's not about getting them to go come to church or getting they like, get your life right now. It's about introducing them to Christ. And every week, I always want to put that out there. The introduction to Christ is the most vital part of this walk. That's the beginning. You can't run until you walk. And you can't walk till you crawl. You can't crawl till you scoop. But the beginning of it all is saying, I accept Christ to be my Lord and Savior. He is waiting with open arms for those who want to, he don't want you to try to do anything but accept him and he will work out everything that you need to be worked out. Amen. All you have to do confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Pray that prayer. Tell God to open your heart, open your mind, that you can be a believer and be part of this because these messages, these words resonate with those who follow Christ. The world rejects it all the time. They kick and scream at this, bump that. Uh, they got, we still arguing about Oh, this was, uh, his lights was black, uh, and they was white, they was green, they was yellow. Don't matter. Jesus didn't say, when you figure out who the Israelites were and what color their skin were, then you're coming to heaven. No. It ain't behind curtain one, two, or three. It's in the open arms of Christ Jesus that you find salvation. And when we come to and we find that salvation and we cling to it and we follow him, that's when the unity can take place. In our churches, we are, so many of our churches, we're missing the mark because we're doing church. We should be unifying as one in Christ. I don't care what your church is called, first, second, third, Baptist, uh, the, the Church of Christ, God, and bread, and I don't, whatever it's called, the church of chicken. You know, I throw that chicken in there. <laughs> I don't care what it's called. If Christ is the head, then we should be able to come together in unity because he is the head. We are the body. The body follows the head. Amen. And when we stop following the head, we are living in chaos. 
Because like I said, if you say, I'm going to walk out this door and go to the store and your, you start to walk forward and your legs say, no, we're going to walk sideways. And they turn around or walk backwards. And you're not in control. That's how Jesus feels. Because we claim to be the body, yet we walk away. We go in the direction we want to go in when the head is telling us to go. Unity in our community, in the community of Christ, is what he's striving for here through, through these verses. Let's come together, y'all, on every level that we can and support one another and encourage one another and love one another like the community of Christ does because what part of your body hates the other part? You got, do you... That you're, you, some part of your body, your left arm don't like your right arm. Do they squabble all the time? Do you do you do you have a problem with your left and right side? Do your eyes, your left eye don't like your right eye. If you if your left eye and your right eye battling, you know what's gonna happen. You're gonna be cock eyed. <laughs> go end up, you gonna end up seeing all kinds of ways. So. This is one body, and the body should function in, in, in cohesion with one another. Everything operates. When I say I lift my arm and I move my fingers, it's all like an orchestra. Because the mind, the head, controls it. And when we learn to follow the head, which is Jesus Christ, all the control that we will see in our lives. Oh, the, the, the wonderful things that, that can actually happen and, and take place through this. The life that, lives that can be saved when we come together in unity. So, I just encourage you, y'all, to rethink, to, to keep your focus. I got uh, a niece when she was about three years old. We had a conversation, and her name is Lonnie. Lonnie, I call her Lonnie Bunny. Lonnie Lon. And I told that baby then, you need to focus. You need to stay focused. And her entire life, Lonnie, how long? Lonnie, 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 probably about 12, 13 now, so. But as she grew up, every time I would see her, she said, Uncle Tony, I'm staying focused. She stayed focused, and she understood it when uh, we were sitting there talking. And I didn't, you know, I said it to her, but she came back and she said, I said, what were you doing? She said, I was back there uh, watching cartoons, and they did something. And she said, and I was, I was focused. And so I knew she understood what was being said, and, and that has carried on. So every time I see her and we talk, she lets me know, Uncle T, I remain focused. Amen. A anything else you wanted to add, sweetie? No, sir. Okay, okay. Well, uh, again, y'all, uh, I've enjoyed sharing with y'all uh, this evening. It's been, it's been good as always, but we have to show community uh, the, the community of God, that we are unified. We have to show the, the community of the world that God's people are unified. We got to quit. Uh, we like the Hatfields and the McCoys. The, the, the MBC church against the, the EBC church, whatever. No. We got to come together in unity. Forget our established uh, traditional differences and focus on the main thing that's got us in the situation we're in, and that is Jesus Christ. So thank you uh, for joining in and and, and uh, I hope that you were encouraged and that we uh, can go forth and something that you got out of this discussion will help you uh, and, and maybe you can share with somebody that will help them. But uh, we love you guys, and, you know, we, we always want to continue to be an encouragement. And, again, if there's anything in particular you want to talk about, put it in the comments. We go through 
We want to meet you at your needs, where you are. Got any questions for us and that we take off of me, then you need to contact us. Just let us know. We'll get in contact with you. We're going to continue to pray for all of you. We love you guys. And, and again, we appreciate you joining in and, and hope that uh, these words of encouragement uh, are something that you can use in your life and that you can share with others. Amen. All right. So if you would, sweetie, uh, pray us out and we'll be done for this evening. Yes, sir. Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you just thanking you for just being who you are, that you are just a loving, forgiving Father that cares for your people, that you have put people in place that we may be equipped, that we may do the service of drawing others to you, building the kingdom that your house may be full. Lord, I just pray uh, that we would to continue to focus on that mission, Lord Jesus, that we may be unified in our service to you. Lord, that we don't get tied up and swayed from the left and right, uh, focusing on our own agenda, but help us to be mindful, help us to stay uh, humble, and help us to stay committed to doing the work that you have assigned for us to do, that when you return, we may hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Lord, we need you in this day and this hour with so much confusion going on in this world. Continue to shine your light brightly on us. Continue to keep us in your word that we may be encouraged by it, that we don't get uh, sidetracked and lose our focus uh, by all the noise that is around us. But keep us grounded in your word. In Christ Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Again, thank y'all for joining in and I will be uh, Praying for you guys, y'all pray for us, that God just keep us focused on him and let us go forth and show unity, show the world what it looks like to be part of the kingdom. All right? Y'all have a good night. Peace. We'll see you next week. God bless you.